Look at this guy with his antique badger shirt on. Boy, that shirt's worth money. I don't know why you'd be working on it today. <laughs> All right, we're getting things underway here today. Got most of the garbage cut off of the tailgate. And we're gonna get a new grain spout put on there. I started to cut this post out and then I said, you know what, I'm just gonna put a patch in behind there and be able to weld it from the outside all the way around here. And then just put our post cap on there, kind of like I did on the outside of the body here. And then all we're gonna put on here is a three inch, three or a four inch extension. Um, Funneling them is no good. Um, I didn't realize that till after I did a few of them that way that you can't reach into the corner with a hoe to pull the corners out. You end up banging your knuckles. So all we really need is something to create a little bit of a flow spout so that when you're dumping into an auger or something, the stuff doesn't spill all over the place and it just kind of gives it some direction. So we'll get that on there and then we'll build our toppers. Nate's got his muffler off of this thing here. And then we'll, oh, there's the muffler there. Then we'll come over next door here and we'll head it out for parts now. Come over next door here, they're working on the mobile. Of course that was melted off here overnight. And what they're doing on this is they're trying to get that works for the pneumatic locks that's been seized up for a while and every time we went to use it we'd have to heat it up to get it to work now he's cutting it out and he's got to put a new pin in there probably just put a one inch bolt sand the hell of it down and uh get it to work All right, Kerr has this pin fixed on this pneumatic lock. You can see the bolt that he's got in there now. He had to cut the pin out, and that is the all oh, the tie rod end or the clevis end of the actual pneumatic cylinder, which is right there. And then that does the cam over lock design for these pneumatic locks. He ended up drilling a hole through the bolt so that we can keep that grease because we we're having trouble with that getting uh, stiff and not working these uh, locks here for the tailgate. So Jaden, he's just kind of doing some sanding here on this uh, 4020. He's getting after the wire wheel in here on the weight. We'll get into the, the rims. In the frame we don't have a fan blaster we probably should get one um, he's worked on some of these panels here now this has got new uh, battery boxes that we bought a couple years ago that one's a little older and needs cleaning up but he's got the uh, sheet metal pieces here done and ready for primer floor panel whatever like that Jared, that steering valve on there which we don't want to repeat what we said here yesterday in yesterday's video but Tim got back here with some parts and Nate's getting ready to throw a uh, muffler bracket on there and new muffler now we'll show you what we're working on here with this mess of a tailgate um, I probably should have just built a new one, but we're trying to salvage this older one here and it's gonna work out It'll be all good, but we've got some rot in that outer frame piece the gate. Two by four tubing and it's rusted out. We're just gonna cut the rust out of it cap it and save it we got to do both sides. I think we got to do both sides, but this side's rotted right through. But we're going to be able to cut that off. 
make that look nice. We've got a little bit of a work here to do as well, which that'll patch in nicely. And I can't recall if this one now, that one's got some holes in it as well. So we're gonna cap that quick and uh, get that done here. Nate, you're gonna learn real fast that you do not sit underneath what you're torching. You're heating them nuts up, but you gotta watch it. You'll have hot nuts here in a minute, both upstairs and downstairs. Yeah, works really nice. Also, it burns holes in my creeper too. So, that and the sawdust that's on the floor is a great accelerant here, along with the oil and everything else. So, I would almost maybe clean up that sawdust before you go too far. See if that'll go, it, it might go, but. Oh, see, see what I tell you. That nylon crap is gonna come down and it's gonna heat the nuts up down below. Watch your eyeballs. Fun stuff. Well, we aren't having any luck with my old plasma cutter here. This is a Hypertherm Power Max 800. And I've had this for 22, 23 years. And I'm having trouble with the uh, cutting lead on it. I might only need a trigger for it. This lead is not that old. However, the uh, trigger wants to stay on once in a while. Other times it doesn't want to strike an arc, so there might be a combination of things going on there. But um, I ended up replacing that lead a couple years ago, and then here is my old lead here, and the jacket was cracked on this one, the, the outer covering here, and it's cracked up in here. And we broke some of the wires, so we but but connected the wires back together, and then I put a little bit of a splint on it so that it wasn't flexing the, the wires there. So uh, this one is mediocre, but it doesn't work the greatest. However, I don't have any consumables for this lead, so Tim went to Harbor Freight to get a plasma cutter so that we could get back up and going quickly today. Um, Han didn't have anything in stock. I was gonna buy a brand new one, get that one fixed so I had it. Um, what I'm looking at buying potentially is a Hypertherm 65. It's a little bit bigger than this one, but it's about three grand. The one that Tim's picking up at Harbor Freight is 850 bucks so we're gonna give that a try and see how it does but I kind of need a plasma cutter to finish this job up here so um, we're waiting for him to get back we'll unbox that in a minute here once he gets here and we'll see how that old harbor freight unit works all right Tim is on the move just pulled in with it so we're gonna unbox this bad boy <laughs> and see how it works i don't know it doesn't look like much probably won't work that long but all it's got to do is get us for, through for a couple days here so let's see how this thing works It's a little one, huh? It's little. Small. Small. <laughs> That's a little Carry that in your back pocket. Yeah. Like I don't even know if I need a cart for this one. Oh. What's the other one we got? I don't know where you're at. More. Well, I don't know if I'm even going to buy the other one now. I don't know. I like the color. 
Yeah, the color's neat. Won't move oh, it. the cord is even gonna work. They said I had a dryer plug on it. That ain't a dryer plug. So do you. Oh man, it might fall through. I might have to put a piece of metal on there. <laughs> that guy in there. <laughs> you just a little guy. Oh, Thank you, Nate. Put a strap on it. If you hit a bump, it might bounce yeah, out. It might fall off in there. I need to jack that baby up. Ah, uh, where's the strap? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> what did he say? Uh, Alright, what do we got here? Owner's manual, lead. What they give you? No. Oh wow, you can adapt it to, for 110 power. You know, that might be pretty handy. Run it on the, well, we can still plug it into the, we can still plug it into the welder because that's 220 or, you know, the gas drive welder. Oh, these twisty ties. They ain't no fun. Oh, we twisty ties them good. No. Oh wow. The only trouble is the ground lead is only about six foot long. This is for a house for a little homey type of person. Not professional unit. Alright. Look at this guy. He's got a tip extension on it there, Tim. Now you can tip it. Do you need a tip this extension? Is long. Here, you can use that tip extension. Watch it, you're making your better door than a window. Ah, the suspension don't fit in the sharp at first. There. Walk that baby in. <coughs> that don't have right. gas or anything? What's that? Don't have to put gas to it or anything? No. What's it got a safety guide on it? I guess that rides on there like that. It's got some that kind of a end on there. Yeah. See, so so you can ride it. The other, the other plasma cutter had a uh, cuff on it that you can ride on the uh, ground or on the metal. So it came with consumables and you picked up consumables, right? Yeah, it looks that way. Let's uh, make sure this gun is loaded. What is this, like a builder? Yeah. It's got, that goes inside here, I think. Yeah. yeah, maybe it's an inline filter for the other end, but let's fire it up. This is cheap shot. Yeah, I had to put a block of wood on there. My God, it's a little guy.
be the first cop of this. I'll have my glasses. Make sure we have our safety materials all on here. All right. I'm gonna stand back in case it blows up. Thing the other one did. The air stays on all the time on some of these cheaper ones. Does that? Maybe that ground ain't good now. demonstrations but um, that's freehand I of course didn't cut that the straightest but um, that works pretty good I think it's gonna be just right so a little small on the cart but let's go ahead and get some work done here I guess this is where we're gonna sign off with this video very unproductive day today we got some of the gate cleaned up. We got figured out what we're gonna do. Everything's trimmed off of it. And then tomorrow we add some new material to it. But with that uh, plasma cutter taking a crap on us today, um, I lost a lot of time. I was hunting for one. Um, the Hypertherm PowerMax 800 that I have is equivalent to a hypertherm power max 45 i was looking for a 65 and um the local walden shop didn't have one in stock the one uh that 65 that i was looking at uh purchasing they did have it at another branch but i wouldn't get it for four or five days that's not gonna work i want to get this thing done so we stepped over to uh, Harbor Freight. Tim went over there and picked this guy up for me. I'm kind of impressed with it. The Power Max 65 was going to be three grand. This little guy here was 850 bucks. Now I don't know how good the lead is. How long the lead is going to last? The ground is only like eight foot long. That's a little bit of a problem, but that can be added on to easily enough. Um, it is 220 volt however it can be plugged into a 110 outlet there is an adapter that I have here somewhere 
think it's over here. Yeah, it's right here. Here's this adapter here uh, that you can run it off 110. So far as I know here. Yeah, it says switch voltage to uh, match it. There is a button on there that converts it from 240 to 120. Um, I guess it's on the face of it. Yeah, it's right, right there, right here. So I have not tried it on 110, but the amount of work that I was doing to it, I did have to cut a brand new piece of metal. Um, this little piece here to put on there to take this makeshift homeowner lift cart uh, to turn it into a plasma cutter cart that's what i had my old plasma cutter on that cut that just as fast if not faster than the power max 800 and i used it to cut a lot of the crap off that tailgate now we'll get into cutting some metal here tomorrow we don't cut much more than about quarter inch with a plasma cutter um the only reason we like to use the plasma cutter is because we run such a big tip on our torches. Now, this is a propane oxygen cutting unit here. I also have an acetylene oxygen cutting unit. We run the bigger hoses on this, and this here will cut four inch like nothing. And then this is the one that I run the big rosebud on. Um, you guys have seen me run that that at the time I think was the largest rosebud I could get in at the time back in the day um, We were replacing cutting edges on buckets left and right for different guys around the neighborhood here and um, Now everybody's gone to the replaceable bolt-on type I could take a uh, 7 8 by 8 cutting edge we would cut the old one all off weld the new one on leave it long enough and we would round the corners and this unit here is the main reason why i bought it so i could heat that metal up and pull that put that bend in the cutting edge so you had a nice rounded um cutting edge for the bucket but now anymore anybody puts the bolt on ones on there and if they maintain that they don't have to have the bucket all cut up to have a new cutting edge put on it and uh this one here is the acetylene oxygen unit now again we don't run uh small tips so um here's the rosebud for this torch here this is a victor both of these torches are victors i have a harris torch on the uh service truck and i think i have a couple of spare harris uh torch heads torch cutting handles here around here but uh we don't run a real small tip so we can't cut the real thin sheet metal with a torch and the beauty with cutting sheet metal with a plasma cutter is it doesn't heat the metal up as much and you don't get the warping with this thinner sheet metal like you see on the sides of these trucks that sheet metal there on the side is a 12 gauge sheet metal posts are 11 gauge and the floors are 3 16 so for the most part the bulk of the material that we're cutting the thickest is usually three inch or uh, 3 16 so um not too productive of a day uh spent a lot of the time on the phone ordering parts and jockeying and stuff around they put an exhaust system on this truck here uh, jared was sick today he didn't do anything more uh to the 4020 the boys did uh, gr uh sand down some sheet metal uh we showed you a cursed job that he did on that truck earlier and um they're gonna work on brakes on this tomorrow so that's gonna do it folks i'm just trying to put out a video every day or so here to show you what's going on if it's too much and if it's too boring 
um, we'll cut back to doing, you know, just update videos here. But um, if I don't get a lot of views, we're going to back it down so that you guys don't have to watch this uh, boring stuff. So um, tomorrow, hopefully we can finish this. I said that in yesterday's video. I was hoping to finish this today, but I got into a little bit more than what I thought that tailgate was going to involve. But... Um, we're gaining on it. We're, we're getting there. So that's going to do our folks. Thanks for watching and we will catch you at the next video.